Uh, so welcome to our community chat with alumni and our networking hour, where it is our pleasure to help address the many questions that our prospective students may have about the experience of studying at Harvard, Harvard Extension School. My name is Jill Felicio, and I'm a graduate of the ALB and ALM programs in 2000 and 2013, respectively. Now, it is no understatement to say that my time at Harvard was life-changing. And now as the Director of Advancement here at Harvard's Division of Continuing Education, I oversee the global engagement and fundraising initiatives that provide a lifetime of professional, educational, and social opportunities for over 60,000 alumni and students. Now, I have just a couple of housekeeping notes as we get underway. Today's alumni presentation will be recorded, captioned, and posted on Harvard Extension School's YouTube channel and our exclusive Harvard Extension Exploration Month's event page. Now, breakout rooms are not recorded. Now, alumni, if you don't mind and have the ability, you can update your Zoom name and add your Harvard degree information, very hard earned. Uh, if you take a look at my Zoom name, for example, I have my degrees there, it's helpful. Now everyone is welcome to use the chat box throughout today's session to say hello, to share insights or ask any general questions. We'll also be dropping web links into the chat as we go. Now, graduates of Harvard Extension School's ALB and ALM degree programs become lifetime members of both the Harvard Alumni Association and the Harvard Extension Alumni Association. Now, these associations provide an abundance of exclusive benefits and access. Alumni are invited to join any of over 175 Harvard clubs from around the world, regional chapters in your area, shared interest groups organize around your passion or profession and Harvard travel programs. And our alumni also enjoy a lifetime of career resources, virtual and in-person reunions and events, volunteer opportunities, Harvard library access, alumni award programs, Harvard athletic memberships, and there just are so many Harvard publications. And Harvard Extension School's graduate certificate and micro certificate earners become lifetime associate members of the Harvard Extension Alumni Association. They also enjoy many of these same benefits. And now it is my pleasure to introduce some very special alumni who have graciously volunteered to share a bit about their journeys at Harvard Extension School and beyond. So Frank Caprino, would you mind getting us started, saying a little bit about what brought you to Harvard? Uh, hi, I'm Frank Caprino. I'm um, I graduated in '17 with a ALM in uh, management, and then I went on and got a certificate in innovation. Uh, how I got started in Harvard? Uh, it was kind of on a lark. Uh, I was looking up online courses. A Harvard course uh, came up. Thought, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll try Harvard. Got an A. Uh, my friend said, quit while you're ahead. Uh, and I said, you know, I'll go for it. So I went ahead and got the uh, degree. And it, it was a great experience. Uh, two things that people don't um, know about Harvard is one is that the place is incredibly clean. Uh, places like spotless, spotless. And the other is that everybody is super, super nice. It's, it's really contradictory uh, to... Um, the image that that's portrayed in in popular media so it's been a great experience who's next i think i'm next hey garf how are you yeah go for it lynn all right hi uh, i see a lot of familiar names here today it's so great to see all of you um, I'm Lynn Larson. I graduated from Harvard Extension School in 2011 with my ALB degree. I was working full time at Harvard and a colleague mentioned the Extension School to me. So I checked it out and um, I was in no position to you know, quit working full time. And this offered me a great opportunity to earn my degree on my own time, flexible schedule. Um, and I loved it. And so I took a few years off after I graduated and I thought, geez, I had so much fun the first time. Why don't I go back for another degree? And I also just wanted to get a master's degree. I didn't want that to prevent me from a great career opportunity, which required a master's degree. So 
um, I went ahead and I pursued the ALM management degree, loved it. Um, I had no idea, you know, I, I did it because I loved it and I just thought it was a great opportunity. And I had no idea that it would end up, uh, you know, giving me the great career I have today. I ended up becoming an academic advisor, working with Daniel Mungin, um, advising our management and finance degree students. And today I'm the assistant director of management programs. So although completely unexpected, my experience at Harvard Extension School is just, um, it's just been amazing and I obviously can't get enough. <laughs> That's awesome, Lynn. Thank you. Santiago. Hello everyone. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, depending on wherever you are. Uh, I'm Santiago Creueras. I am an ALM uh, 2000, CSS 2000 and ALM 2001. I'm probably the youngest among the participants that you will be hearing from uh, today. It's a great pleasure to uh, virtually say hello to, to all of you. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, join the Extension School almost 25 years ago, and I've been, I've been very well linked to, 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 to the school in, in, in many ways. I've had the honor to uh, serve in, in the Harvard Alumni Association uh, that Jill was talking about and also within the Harvard uh, uh, Extension Alumni Association as one of the uh, board members. I was an elected uh, director and I have just been appointed a graduate director from the school. So I'm one of your representatives among the Harvard Alumni uh, Association. Um, Studying in, in, in the evenings was a, a great opportunity. Uh, for those of you that are just uh, starting your program, you will have the opportunity to meet, meet people traveling uh, from uh, different parts of the world if, if they are here full time. And some of them will be commuting from either DC, uh, Maine, Rhode Island, uh, New York, uh, and close by uh, places uh, to just take uh, the class and, and, and to meet you all. Some of you are going to be uh, connecting virtually. Uh, one of, of, of the schools that actually started the, the virtual programs was the extension school. I know that, that, that after the, the COVID pandemic, it sounds like something that is pretty normal and popular, but uh, one of the innovating schools within the world was the extension school. And anyways, I had the, the opportunity to take wonderful courses related to management, related to government, related to history. And, and at some point, I took advantage of uh, becoming a special student through the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. That's something uh, you should work on if you, if you feel like you have the time and you want to do it. It's also a great opportunity, so you can also cross-register and, and take advantage of the one Harvard and the, and the other schools. So uh, if you want to, to learn more a little uh, of that, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to talk to you uh, about it as well. And anyways, I have to, to mention that uh, I'm a student again. After almost 25 years, I'm coming back to Harvard. I am having my, my first day as a mid-career uh, master's in public administration student. So... Uh, my background within the extension school allowed me to move on uh, within the public sector, mostly in Mexico and, and uh, with the development banks and international organizations. And this is uh, a live reset. I'm happy to chat with you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Santiago, and congratulations on that uh, new Harvard affiliation you're working on. It's really exciting. And on that vein, I want to introduce Rob Friedman, who can tell us what he's working on. I'm also back in school. I'll be hanging out with Frank doing all-nighters and keggers. And no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I actually, I got to Harvard Extension when I was 53. Um, I had had a long business career. I had retired. I was taking a break. I was sort of full-time daddy in some ways, but I needed one night a week away from the kids. And this is when the school was very different than it is now. I would, I lived in New York City. I would take the train up. I would do back-to-back -back classes, go back home the next day. Um, it was a blast. And 
one of the nicest aspects to it was the very first class I walked into was taught by renowned scholar Leo Damrosch. And he, he made it very clear that he really loved teaching the extension students. He loved the part-timers, the oldest students, the people that had been around for a while. I think it, it, it sort of broke up his own, maybe, maybe some kind of monotony as a teacher. And I think the, the people that are opening up their doors to us are thrilled that we are there. And that was apparent to me from the very beginning. Uh, Harvard Extension was not that long ago, but it was a very different place then. It was basically an on-campus school. Of all the classes I took, only one of them was recorded lectures. Uh, now, of course, the world of Zoom has come to us, and, and it's now it's an international school. It is expanding in, in, in remarkable ways. Um, another little perk for those of you who happen to live in uh, certain towns was I got to join the Harvard Club in New York which became my office away from home. Um, I, I am the, uh, I'm a member of the Harvard Extension Alumni Association Board serving as a governance director with Rick Pearl, who you'll hear from in a little bit. Uh, a few years ago, I decided I wanted to go back to school again. And the program I wanted to attend was at Harvard Divinity School. I applied, I was accepted, and I, we have actually, my wife and I have moved to Boston. We're here for a two year duration. And I doubt I would have been accepted to the Divinity School program had I not done the Extension School program. So I am grateful to the Extension School for opening that door, which has made the Divinity School another door open for me. Um, with that, thanks. That's amazing, Rob. Thank you and best of luck with that. It sounds amazing. Uh, Frank, I know your hand is up. Did you wanna reflect on something that Rob said? Yes, you hear that a lot from uh, Harvard instructors. Uh, they really enjoy teaching um, extension school students mm -hmm. uh, as compared to, uh, especially compared to undergrads. So don't feel self-conscious about being older and being a student. Mm -hmm. uh, the instructors uh, really appreciate your maturity and your experience and, and your level of commitment to the program. Yeah. Here, here. Yeah. And with that, we're going to move on to uh, Libretta, who just experienced graduation this past May and is on to something very exciting herself. Libretta. Hi, um, Frank. Uh, thank you so much for um, what you said. I'm going to piggyback on that. My name is Libretta Andrews. And like Jill said, I just graduated um, from Harvard Extension School this past May, cum laude. And it was absolutely amazing. Um, I began Harvard Extension School with the end in mind. I was a stay-at-home mom for over 21 years. And after putting our fifth child in college, um, they all came to me and said, Mom, you've done everything for us. We're all in school. Three of them have already graduated from college. And my youngest daughter uh, uh, was accepted to Wharton last year. And they said, now it's time for you to go and achieve the dream that you've always wanted to achieve. And that was to work towards my doctorate degree. So I uh, did some research and I found that I had an opportunity to get the best education in the world. And that was at Harvard. And I went through the process. And uh, once I was accepted, I began with the end in mind. And I um, had an excellent academic advisor. Um, I would like to encourage everyone that once you are assigned to your academic advisor, they will stay with you through your entire experience at Harvard. Um, and I worked really hard and I um, decided that I would apply for my master's in education. I applied to Brown University and to Harvard and I was accepted into both because Harvard Extension School prepared me to have the confidence to be able to apply to both schools. I was really prepared in uh, all of my classes and this upcoming fall, actually we just started last month, but I'll be moving on campus in two weeks to attend a residential program on campus at the um, Harvard um, Graduate School of Education where I will study public policy and analysis. And then from there, um, I know that I will be prepared to apply for my doctorate program. But um, I have one fond memory and one of my very first classes, I had imposter syndrome because I didn't know if, it, you know if I really deserved to be there. And my instructor said, for those that are here, you deserve to be here. You worked here, you are Harvard. And I took that, I believed in that, and that got me all the way through. 
Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think everyone has felt that. And Harvard's former president, Lawrence Bacco, when he came and accepted the presidency, he said exactly that, that when he first stepped foot on campus, he didn't think he deserved to be here. And he said, Harvard does that to everyone. So it's quite a, quite a nice sentiment. Thank you, Brita. All right, we'll move on. Israel. Yes, Jill, thank you. Thanks everybody for sharing with me this uh, this time, allowing me the opportunity to talk to you and just, just to give you a little bit of background on what I've done and share my experiences. Uh, so uh, ALM 2020 uh, management, uh, and uh, the reason why, or how I got into Harvard, first, uh, at some point in my career, I thought that it was, uh, I needed to do something different. I just, I just wanted to do something different and I, I had no clue what it was. I just knew what kind of things I liked, what kind of things I didn't. So I did my research and, uh, through many programs and I, I found this unique program in Harvard Extension School that it's not just the flexibility of you know, going to classes uh, during the summer, weekends, residences, and, and online, but also the flexibility to find subjects that really, really, really are aligned with what I wanted to do or what I want to do today, which is something that I did not find anywhere else in that the index to the extent that Harvard offers them. So I picked I picked some some subjects. They accommodated very well. I went I'll, I'll, as I finished the the courses. I you know I changed my mind here and there because you know you you go and you evolve. You you think that this is probably not the right path, but I'm going this path. So, and I had all that opportunity throughout my whole. Now I'm telling you, five years. It took me five years. I have two daughters, a third coming, which is a boy. Um, and uh, and uh, a job, full time job, and uh, so I needed I needed that possibility not just to have flexibility in, the, in in terms of the time, but also I got the flexibility in terms of what is it that I wanted to do. But besides the knowledge, the understanding, which by the way, the the, the depth of Harvard Extension School is amazing. I had to study like I'd never studied in my life before. I almost got divorced. And I'm just kidding. It's just a joke. <laughs> my wife was uh, <laughs> saying, when are we going to have time for it? And, and, and even though I had that flexibility. But but besides all that, what really gave me it's, it's when, I, when I was in, in the final classes uh, was more confidence on myself. Not confidence on, not, not the kind of confidence that to be assertive or the kind of confidence that you require in a corporate environment, but the kind of confidence that you require in order to be faithful to your beliefs. And, uh, and as I discovered with the professors, I had conversations with the students from all over the world, looking at what people were, many people, multiple people were doing in many places, people who changed careers from being corporate, corporate people to a professor, in this, uh, a teacher in this small school or somebody changing the world in Africa. So, yes, you know, these people had the courage that I've never had in my life. So uh, I, it's just it's just amazing what you can what you can do when you see other people doing things rather than just reading the, about them in books. So that's, and uh, then encouraged by professors. Now that I made a change in my career, I went to a different subject, very related, uh, but a, to, a different, to a different experience and uh, different to what I've done for the last 25 years. It was amazing. It's been the best decision in my life. It was, I, I, I can say Harvard Extension the School spent one of the main, the major milestones in my life. And I'm not saying this just from the academical standpoint and having that Harvard name on my resume. That's, 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 that's awesome. But the confidence that I got, believe, the belief in myself uh, and, and, you know, being, being faithful to my beliefs, being faithful to what I wanted to do in my life, that's something that I, I, I have been looking for for many years and I found it in, in our extension school. So that's, that's pretty much it, by the way, other things. I mean, I, I think if I'm on the rest, you know, the diversity that you find in Harvard Extensions was amazing. We talked to people from multiple backgrounds, multiple multiple everything, right? Now that everybody talks about diversity and inclusion, it couldn't be any more diverse, seriously. And I live in Houston, which is the most diverse city in the United States, uh, even above New York City. And um, yeah, yeah, so that's, um, oh, one thing, one thing that I wanted to mention, and I love me just one minute more. Uh, uh, and you mentioned that I think I think that was uh, uh, I don't know if it was Lane or Frank that you get the idea that Harvard is a is a stuffy kind of institution, but once you join the the, the university, you 
they could not, this university could not make you feel any better. Any, any, you know, like, like a friend. I've been, I've been since I graduated and before I've been in connection with everybody in the university, uh, all, everybody who is in charge of the alumni association, everybody would think, I mean, they've always done anything. That, I mean, they've always done anything to try and help them. And to the, so it's great. I mean, the, and the people that I met was amazing. And remember, in the end, if there is some biases here and there, there is always, you know, 13 schools in Harvard. So every school has a different view, right? But in general, the university is, is just incredibly friendly and open. And uh, that concept of, uh, of uh, stuff, you know, that uh, I don't think that, that that's really, really, that really honors the reality. Anyway. Yeah, thank you, Israel. I mean, I, you know, I, I absolutely couldn't agree. It's Harvard is a family. And congratulations on the addition coming to your family. That's amazing news. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, last but certainly not least is my dear friend, Rick. Uh, Rick and I were on campus in the 90s. Um, probably not many on the Zoom can say that. Uh, but anyway, Rick, go for it. Thanks, Jill. It's great. Um, Israel, um, I'm going to pick up on a point uh, that you made about uh, stuffiness. So my grandfather, uh, Raymond Pearl, was an all-scholastic football player at Cambridge Latin during the uh, 19-teens, I think, and actually was uh, recruited to go to Harvard. But because he was a Cambridge kid, you know, the, um, the pomposity and the elitist ism of the school kind of you know caused him to walk away from it i think he would, didn't you know the social pressures from his friends and family um he had a successful career uh beside all that but um you know it was one of the things that uh, he talked to me about when i was going through harvard actually mid uh, early career um you know to kind of make good on the mistake that he had he had made um, of not attending. And, and I agree, um, Israel, I mean, it's not stuff yet at all. And it's this particular cohort of folks, you know, is not the elitist, pompous group that are the stereotypical, um, uh, you know, um, concept that people have of Harvard. In fact, um, I'm going to also echo some of the points that Rob and Frank made about the professors saying that the folks who went to the extension school because they were going, uh, and when I was going, it was all evening classes or, you know, um, they came with a real desire to learn and have to having cleared the hurdles to get into the program, um, were very appreciative of it. And the feedback was tremendous. And I've made a lot of friends amongst the uh, professors of, of Harvard, and um, they all say the same thing, that the extension school classes were some of their most enjoyable. So anyway, that's just to respond to some of the comments. I, um, As I said, I went, went kind of early in career. I was a newspaper journalist for several years um, and decided that, you know, it was fun. And I got that daily shot of ink in my vein, but there was more to life, especially as I was uh, raising a family. And then my dad passed, and that became even more important for me to do something, but I couldn't go during the day. And so I went to extension as uh, Jill alluded to, you know, all the classes were live tromping through the snow to Seaver Hall and the rest of the place. It was a different world. My class cohort was small enough that we all went to the ARTs, um, uh, you know, theater for our commencement. Whereas this year, um, you know, you wouldn't have been able to fit them all in. And so it's impressive to see how the school has evolved and grown uh, in importance. Um, but I learned how to write. I, I had already been a journalist for many years. Harvard taught me how to write and um, and actually be a better communicator. And I've, I've used that in my career at different stages um, to, um, you know, just get to places that I never thought I could um, previously. And, you know, we, there was someone mentioned of the imposter syndrome, um, you know, once you go to Harvard and get that degree, then, you know, that's that's out the door. I, I'm actually a senior advisor to the United Nations Global Compact. Um, and um, so, you know, I, I think of myself as how the hell did this guy from, you know, Cambridge get to this point in my life? And it's, you know, you get a confidence going through the Harvard program and, and um, being taught by professors who are world class and rubbing elbows with all the likes of you who are showing that you're 
quality people and this is a quality program and yeah if we can utilize that degree to get ahead why shouldn't we you know we've we've all worked hard at it so um i was a journalist i went into telephone telephony i i helped to build uh, the wireless telephone network for one of the large players um then I got into banking at State Street Corporation, where I created their corporate responsibility program, which is oversight of environmental, social, and governance issues. Um, while I was there, I was um, recruited to be on the board of the uh, global UN Global Compacts Network USA. And then when I retired from State Street after 20 plus years, uh, they asked me to come back as a senior advisor as we've grown the staff. I also am an executive advisor to the Boston College Center for Corporate Citizenship, and I'm a professor of practice at the Thunderbird School of Global Management at Arizona State University, all in this ESG base. So I kind of feel that imposter syndrome a lot. And then I think, no, I paid my dues. I've, I've, um, you know, I've done what I needed to do. And, and um, someone mentioned that the Harvard, um, degree doesn't hurt it certainly doesn't and and you should utilize it as you move forward thanks jill oh that's great rick um and he's too modest to mention that he devotes so much time to supporting our community on the board of directors as our secretary so thank you. let's see if anybody wishes to share either live or in our chat box feel free to raise your virtual hand share any like takeaways or like meaningful moments in those breakouts. I know my room had a few. <laughs> Let's see. Is it is it Fadi or Fadi? It's Fadi. Fadi, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so welcome to, uh, I'm glad to see all of the uh, classmates, all of the alumni, and uh, also uh, to, hi to our uh, practice students. Uh, one thing I would like to bring up, and I always like get this question about the Harvard Extension School is, well, is it as good as Harvard? And I'll tell you something. Uh, first of all, I uh, uh, I said it plenty of times. <laughs> I work for Apple. I'm a software engineer on the uh, Vision Pro uh, project. And I'll tell you something. I think Harvard Extension School is even better than the regular academic. I'm not going to say it's better than the other Harvard school, but what's really amazing about it is you get to mix uh, the um, uh, academic uh, learning from one of the best professors. You get to learn from the legendary uh, Henry Lettner, and then you get to learn from one of the some of the best uh, 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 experts in the field. So many times I found myself like when we were working on the uh, a project, uh, the Vision Pro project with Apple, I found myself like um, asking my uh, professors questions. Uh, and and they were able to help me, of course, like without giving any details because, you know, we just announced the project, but uh, they were able to answer me from their own experience. Like a lot of time will be like, oh, this happened to me. Uh, I had something similar. Oh, I understand that you're probably working on something that you cannot tell me about, but let me tell you in general, if you face this, you have to do that. Uh, you, Harvard Extension School bridges that gap. Uh, you hear a lot that uh, the school uh, life or the academic life is different than the real world, uh, not in Harvard Extension School because you get to learn from the best in the field and you get to uh, uh, obtain some real life experience while you are studying at Harvard Extension School. So I just wanted to uh, point that out and uh, thank you for giving me the time. Wow, thank you for sharing that. That's just extraordinary. Uh, Sanita, hello. Hi, Jill, thank you. How are you? Doing well, good to see you, my dear. Yes, uh, so I'll just tell you how Harvard Extension School has changed my life. It's uh, I said it in the breakout room also, but it has, it empowered me to think big, to be bold and to implement change at a national level. Uh, after post-graduation, I came back home and I worked on wheelchair accessibility for people with disability back in India. And I wrote up, I published a manuscript, I created an app in 2013 when apps were very new in India. And I worked with the Ministry of Social Affairs, I attended Rahagiri events, I reached out to 616 Indian institutions for disability people. And somehow this whole thing added to a ripple effect. And a 60, 70 year old policy in India for people with disability passed as a law. And it became the first Indian law for disabled people. Mm 
for which Harvard Extension School also gave me the Michael Scheinigel Award. After that, I have also studied crisis management and emergency preparedness at Harvard Kennedy School. It's Professor Arnold Harvard in Extension School. Uh, he, SARS was one of our case studies. SARS happened in 2002. I studied with Professor Arnold Harvard in 2012. And coronavirus happened uh, in 2022. So it was like a 20-year-old journey. journey. So when it started, when the onset happened, I was a little prepared of what would happen. So I reached out to our professor, Arnold Harvitt, and he said that as a concerned citizen, I can only create awareness, which I started publishing appeals as what should be done. And I guided, and India has 1.4 billion people. So over time, all those messages that I gave or what, how to take the, you know, to address, be prepared and all those with professor Arnold Harvitt's guidance, I'm sure it has been posted in all my Harvard Club of India groups and all of them. And there are lots of bureaucrats, politicians, uh, officers of the government. They've all used them over time. So I mean, what we studied at Harvard Extension School really makes a difference at national levels back home in our countries. So I really thank Harvard Extension School. Thank you. Thank you, Sunita. Hey, hi. Uh, I just wanted to quickly close on something Pedro was talking about in our the, the, the room that's very important not to miss out on uh, some uh, in in person experience. Uh, just wanted to bring that uh, the idea that there is some two credit classes that apply classes that's being offered. In fact, I'm going to take advantage of two of them this fall. So I'm hoping to see some of you there. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And I see Courtney, I think this is this will be a, uh, our last and then we'll be back together once again, but we'll head into another breakout room right after Courtney. Courtney. Hi everyone. I am, um, I just wanted to share my experience at Harvard Extension School. Um, one of the most important things that I experienced was during my capstone. Um, I did my presentation and I had participated in, you know, gave, a 15 minute long speech. And I thought it was just a drop in the bucket. Everybody apparently goes through this imposter syndrome. And this is my first alumni event. And I didn't realize I was amongst such great company. <laughs> I knew that Harvard Extension and Harvard University as a whole was incredible, but I didn't realize that alumni, I had so many people who were just like me and felt just like how the way that I did. When I completed my capstone and got my, you know, grade and knew that I was going to graduate, one of the, uh, the professor, uh, she contacted me and she hired me to be teaching support staff. And I want everybody to, who isn't a, um, who is a student, um, and probably this will resonate with others, is that if you don't feel seen, or you may not feel seen, you're being seen and you're being appreciated and your intellect is being watched. And it's a beautiful thing. It was empowering for me. I didn't feel like I knew what I was doing. And I, you know, somebody else had this experience and this is a completely different professor. And she said, I know the first thing you're gonna say is that you're not qualified but you're a Harvard graduate, you're qualified. And it was totally empowering, it was moving, and it is impactful for not just myself, but my community impacted my family, and in fact, impacted my friends, it impacted the people around me, it impacted my neighborhood, just me being a part of Harvard Extension School, and I wanted people to see that it was a beautiful experience. There's no difference between Harvard University and Harvard Extension School. You get the same experience. You have the same professors. I, I um, did, did my first uh, class with Dr. Leitner and uh, it was a powerful experience and very hard <laughs> experience. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you are a student, you're going to experience, probably, I, I would, put money on the fact that you're probably going to experience some of the most beautiful times of your life. You're going to work harder than you have ever worked in your entire life. But it is that marriage of working really, really hard and being embraced in such a beautiful educational environment that makes it worth it. And by the time you're done, you feel so empowered to go ahead and achieve what you want to achieve, whatever you want. At the end of the day, 
you feel like you can. And so that is a part of this really beautiful experience. I met some of the most brilliant minds at Harvard Extension School, the, my fellow classmates, the professors. It was just one of those things that I really didn't expect. I, you, you go to school and you're just like, okay, take my money. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, get this education. And at the end of the day, I'll get a, you know, I'll get my degree. I got so much more. I got fulfillment and it was just a beautiful experience. So I wanted to share that. Um, I appreciate the time. You're amazing. Um, wow. That's mind blowing. You're amazing. <laughs> so many nodding heads. That was just beautifully said, Courtney. And thank you. And really fitting to get us into our last breakout room because there's so much talk about everyone's why. Like, why are you doing this? What motivates you? What did you seek? And I think, you know, for prospective students, sometimes that's you know, a big change. I want to completely pivot. I want to move into a new industry. I want to bridge industries. I want to do something that seems impossible. So in this next breakout perspectives, ask those students, you know, those uh, former students there, what was their motivation? And I think, you know, for some of you who have done this degree, you had big dreams and share what made them possible and what made it all happen.